Somebody asked a really interesting question in response to my initial lectures, and it's interesting enough that I thought it was worth giving a little uh, discussion of what is the question and what is the answer. So the question basically was that there are two different contexts in which the diffusion coefficient appears in the lecture so far. One appears in describing the uh, smoothing out of concentration fluctuations. And in that discussion, I derived an equation for the flux of particles that's equal to minus VL over 3 dc by dx. So in this formula, V is a typical thermal velocity of molecules. L is the mean free path. The number 3 is something that you can ignore because this is all very rough calculation and all coefficients of the order of 1 you should just not treat seriously. And this is the concentration gradient, the derivative of the concentration with respect to x. And this is what we define as minus the diffusion coefficient dc by dx. This equation sometimes goes by the framework of dissipation because it's describing how a concentration gradient gradually dissipates because of molecular diffusion. On the other hand, we've also derived something else, the diffusion coefficient in another place where uh, it's in the diffusion equation itself, namely dc by dt, and that was equal to dx squared divided by 2 dt times d second c by dx squared. And this again we defined as a diffusion coefficient times d second c by dx squared. So here we see two very different formulas and two different very different, different contexts and here appears the diffusion equation. And here the question is, are these equal? And the answer is, of course, yes. And the reason that they're equal is actually a manifestation of something called the fluctuation dissipation relation. Because it relates something that's uh, relate, it's, it relates something that describes the dissipation of a concentration gradient to the random fluctuating motion of a random walk. So this line could be viewed as a fluctuation quantity. And so the point is that there is a deep relation between dissipation and fluctuation that's embodied by the fluctuation dissipation relation. Now I can't show this in general, but I can kind of wave my hands and give you a feeling for why this ought to occur. So let me just remind you from earlier in the lectures that from kinetic theory of gases, and basically kinetic theory is just a simple picture in which you think of a gas of particles like the gas in this room. It's basically, basically made out of billiard balls and these billiard balls are just zooming around at a roughly 300 meters per second and whenever they collide, they collide elastically and so there's a lot of randomization of the uh, motion of the particles because of these uh, relatively frequent collisions. And it's thermal energy from the outside that's providing the energy that propels the molecules. But once they're moving at 300 meters a second, they more or less move at that speed. So in this kind of a picture of molecules or billiard balls bouncing around, if we follow just a single billiard ball, so here it is, and it moves until it collides with another molecule and then it gets scattered in some arbitrary direction. Now this molecule has a cross-sectional area sigma and so as it's moving about, it sweeps out a collision tube whose uh, radius is roughly of the order of the square root of the cross-sectional area of the molecule. And it goes a distance L, and we determine the characteristic distance that a particle moves before it collides the mean free path by the criterion that when there is of the order of one other molecule in this swept out tube, this collision tube, so the volume of the collision tube is the length of the tube, times the cross-sectional area of the tube, the number of molecules in the tube will then be the volume of the tube times the concentration. When this is of the order of one, that defines a collision. And so we infer from this that the mean free path, the typical distance a molecule moves before it collides with anybody, is of the order of one over C sigma. And as a matter of interest, just to get a feeling for numbers, the concentration of a gas, say in this room, is 10 to the 20th molecules per cubic centimeter. And the typical diameter of a molecule is of the order of a couple of angstroms. And so the cross-sectional area is a couple of angstroms all squared, which is roughly 10 to the minus 15th centimeters. 
So the mean free path is some number of the order of 10 to the minus 5 centimeters, which is of the order of 100 to 1,000 molecular diameters. So this gives you a feeling for like the nature of the motion of molecules in this room. They're all moving roughly 1,000 of their own diameters before they bump into somebody else. And we can also ask, what is the time between collisions? And the time between collisions is roughly the distance that the molecules go between collisions divided by the thermal velocity. And this, 10 to the minus 5 centimeters, the typical thermal velocity is 300 meters per second, roughly, or that's 30,000 centimeters per second. And so this collision time is of the order of 10 to the minus 9 to 10 to the minus 10 seconds. So roughly a billion to 10 billion times a second, a molecule, experience, a molecule experiences roughly a billion to 10 billion collisions per second. So it's pretty impressive. So finally, to uh, motivate or to attempt to argue for this dissipation, uh, fluctuation dissipation relation, let's now go back to the random walk picture. And we derived at one of the very first uh, lectures that the mean square displacement of a random walker was equal to the number of steps in the walk times L squared. In my first lecture, I called this thing little a squared, but now with abuse of notation, well, let me call it the mean free path squared, the length between collisions. But we can write the number of steps in a random walk as the total time elapsed divided by the collision time times L squared. And we can rewrite this as t, and now the collision time is nothing more than L over V times L squared. And again, ignoring all factors of the order of 1, this is of the order of V L times t. And so this is what we found as the diffusion coefficient from the dissipation, uh, from this dissipation relation. But this was derived from the random walk picture. So the ultimate result of this is that these two diff apparently different definitions of the diffusion coefficient, that coming from a fluctuation and that coming from fluctu this coming first one coming from dissipation, the second one from fluctuation, these guys are equal. 